Sape satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta Hello, I'm Dharmasar Thero, and I'm here with the 22nd episode of Nibbana, the secret treasure of the Buddhas. So last time we were talking about Venerable Nanda, the Buddha's cousin, who still had some attachment to sense pleasures. And so the Buddha offered him 500 heavenly nymphs <laughs> as an incentive to practice. <laughs> but once he did the practice, even for a relatively short time, then what happened? The Buddha said, Nanda, having comprehended your awareness with my own awareness, I realized that Nanda, through the ending of the effluence, has entered and remains in the effluent-free awareness release and discernment release, directly knowing and realizing them for himself right in the here and now. When your mind, through lack of clinging, was released from the effluence, I was thereby released from that promise. Then, on realizing the significance of that, the Blessed One on that occasion exclaimed, In whom the mire of sensuality is crossed over, the thorn of sensuality crushed, the ending of delusion reached, he doesn't quiver from pleasures and pains. A monk. So this shows that once one contacts Nibbana, then he becomes free from the effluence, the effluence of desire, the effluence of ignorance, the effluence of fabrications, and so on. He doesn't any more quiver, he doesn't wobble, he doesn't shake, he's solid, because he realizes the transcendence, the deathless, uh, the bhavanirodho, destruction of becoming, extinction, nibbana, the end of the fire of craving. So this is realized directly in the here and now. There is no long journey on a twisting path. That's not the actual words of the Buddha. That's somebody else's image. Yes, he calls his method the Eightfold Path, but this path has <laughs> the attribute of once it is complete, once it is perfect, it simply disappears and all that's left is Nibbana. For uh, as long as a person is attached to sense enjoyment, they want to go to heaven, either in this world or in some other world, either in this life or in another life. Isn't it? They want to go to a place where all their desires are fulfilled, where they're beautiful and perfect, where everybody loves them. Dream on. <laughs> That's not here and now. That's there and then. And so we split ourselves by our desires into the way we are now and the way we want to be in the future. Isn't it? This split is suffering. This is dukkha. This is mental anguish because we cannot simply accept the way it is. And because of that, we suffer. Not only that, we have to go through the whole painful uh, and laborious process of creating an I and maintaining an identity and so on. Whew, it's exhausting. But when somebody can lay down this burden, they feel so much relief. And that's just the preliminary stage. The... Nibbana is not something to be reached. It's not something to be attained. It's not something to be acquired. 
It's not a place where we go. Nibbana is always there, waiting for us. And as soon as we get everything lined up properly, the Eightfold Noble Path, all the eight steps, Nibbana simply appears. Because Nibbana is what is. It's Dhamma. It's the way it is. And when we understand why it is the way it is, then we can easily give up these effluents and accept the free gift of Nibbana. So the Buddha says, Svakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehi Pasiko Opanaiko Pachitang Vedi Tabho Vinyuhiti. The Dhamma is well proclaimed, Svakato, by the Blessed One, Bhagavata. It's visible here and now, Sanditiko visible here and now. Akaliko, timeless. That means eternal, deathless, without beginning or end. Akaliko, ehipasiko, huh? inviting of inspection. Ehipasiko literally means come and see. Huh? Come to this Dhamma, come to this path and see for yourself. Open Aiko, onward leading. Why? Because every step of progress that we make on this path leads to greater and greater pleasure, greater and greater insight, greater wisdom, greater understanding, greater realization. Open Aiko onward leading, and pachitang veditabho vinyuti, directly experienceable by the wise. And this occurs in many places throughout the suttas, uh, beginning with the Dhamma Pravartika Sutta, the turning of the wheel of Dhamma. So now, why do the scholars try to refute this? Why do the scholars say uh, the uh, Nibbana is something far away. Huh? It's, it's in the future. It's in another life, even. You can't experience or you can't reach Dhamma in this life. Why do they say this? Why do they argue with the Buddha? Why do they contradict the Buddha? Well, you have to understand religion and politics. Politicians want to use religion to keep the masses under control. And so whenever a fresh insight into spiritual reality comes out, they want to turn it into a religion to use to uh, suppress the masses. The first enemy of any ruler is the people. So he has to use religion to keep them down. So. You must attain Nibbana, they say, but you can't attain Nibbana. <laughs> you have to do this, but you can't do that. Huh? It's the same thing they use in school. You have to learn stuff, but you're stupid. You can't learn anything. Huh? You have to be creative and smart, but no, you're, you're dumb and stupid, and you can't do anything new or exciting. You have to follow what's in these old books written by these people long ago. That's not really the way it is. Really the way it is, is that Nibbana is eternal. It's ever present. And it's available everywhere, at all times, to anyone. Everyone has the ability to realize Nibbana. All you have to do is sit down and overcome these effluents. And the Buddha gives exactly the way how to do it. So it's, it's not like an ordinary test. You know, and if you go for an examination in school, you answer the questions 
and then you have to wait for it to be graded and then you get the result back and maybe it's 50%, 60%, 80%, 90%, something like that. And then later on, if you pass, you get the certificate of graduation. But with Nibbana, as soon as you answer the question properly, boom, the result is there. The significance is there. Uh, the certificate is granted immediately. You graduate. You're done. You're out of here. And you know it. You know it for yourself. For example, bhikkhus, there are these four establishments of mindfulness. What four? Here, bhikkhus, a bhikkhu dwells contemplating the body in the body, feelings in feelings, mind in mind, phenomena in phenomena, ardent, clearly comprehending, mindful, having removed covetousness and displeasure in regard to the world. When bhikkhus, these four establishments of mindfulness have been developed and cultivated, one of two fruits may be expected, either final knowledge in this very life, or if there is a residue of clinging, the state of non-return. So the Buddha says, Dhamme Anya, the perfection of knowledge of Dhamma, the realization of Dhamma, Nibbana, cessation, extinction, extinguishing the fire of lust, of craving. Not any more uh, having displeasure in regard to the world. Displeasure means I don't like the way it is, I want it to be some other way. In other words, desire. So as soon as we accept that what is, is the way it is, because that's the way it is. <laughs> as soon as we accept that, then we can let go of this desire and also just be the way we are, which is fine. And go on to concentrate and realize Nibbana. This experience of arhantship is the final attainment, the ultimate possible in human life. And this is called Anyapalo, the fruit of complete knowledge. The concentration whereby neither pressed down nor forced back, nor with fabrication kept, blocked, or suppressed, still as a result of release, contented as a result of standing still, and as a result of contentment, one is not agitated. This concentration is said by the Blessed One to be the fruit of gnosis, anya phalo, the fruit of perfect knowledge, nibbana, release, cessation. So this is obtainable. This is available to everyone. Everyone can go sit down in a quiet place and freely realize this truth. But you have to know one thing. You have to know what Nibbana really is. If you have the proper vision of Nibbana, then it becomes a simple matter to figure out what you need to do to get there. Any intelligent person can figure it out by themselves. There's no need to read books and books and books. All you need to know is this one thing. What is Nibbana? That's why we're concentrating on this point, because it leads to the opening of the crown chakra. It leads to the realization of this anyapalo, this perfect knowledge, uh, this Nibbana. That's why Nibbana is called something to be realized. This noble truth of the cessation of suffering is to be realized. Thus, because in regard to things unheard before, there arose in me vision, knowledge, wisdom, true knowledge, and light. So, when you realize this, you become certain that kina jati vusitam brahmacharya, birth is extinct and the holy life is lived completely. So, this is the way leading to the cessation of fermentations. His heart, thus knowing, 
thus seeing, is released from the fermentation of sensuality, the fermentation of becoming, the fermentation of ignorance. With release, there is the knowledge released. He discerns that birth is extinct, the holy life fulfilled, the task done. There is nothing further for this world. So the very next thing after realization of Nibbana is this realization, released. It's done. It's finished. There's no more birth. Why? No more desire for becoming. No more process of becoming, Paticca Samupada. No more birth equals no more death, and so on. The whole process of Paticca Samupada falls apart. So, this is so simple. This is so easy. This is so direct. Once you have the actual knowledge of what is Nibbana, then it's very easy to figure out the rest. We don't require a whole shelf of books uh, or even one book. All we need is the understanding of this one point. And that's why there is so much resistance to discussing Nibbana in religious circles. Okay? People don't want to talk about this because they would rather keep uh, the congregation in ignorance so that they can collect more donations. I'm serious, folks. If you go to any Buddhist country or any Buddhist temple and you say, I want Nibbana, they're going to say, okay, sit down here. You're going to have to meditate for the rest of your life and you're going to have to take another birth in a higher plane and so on and so forth and so on. And they're not going to give you the secret. Whereas the Buddha, many times, people would come to him one time, get the instruction, and go off and realize in no long time this Nibbana. So how is that? Why is there still a market for people who obfuscate the truth? Because we have been led to the erroneous belief that the truth is very difficult to obtain that Nibbana is impossible for us to reach. Only these wise people in the ancient past could reach it. But that's not true. That's a distortion. That's an obfuscation of the actual truth of the Buddha. You can do this. Anyone can do it. It doesn't require a genius. It doesn't require someone special. Uh, the Buddha was very special. He discovered this in a world full of ignorance. But now that it's open, now that it's uncovered, now that it's available, anyone can do it. There's no bar. There's no limit. And there doesn't even have to be much of a delay. In no long time, you can realize the same thing. So scholars go on asking, what is the purpose of Nibbana? What is the meaning of Nibbana? And still, the meaning is there in so many suttas. It's given. It's open. It's, a, it's an open secret. But people don't want to understand the simple truth. They want to search for some obscure meaning by changing the definitions of the words in the dictionary and stuff like that. And all that does is puts Nibbana farther and farther away and makes it more and more difficult to obtain. But what we're saying, what the Buddha is saying, what Bhikkhu Jnanananda is saying in all his books, what Bhikkhu Buddha Das is saying in all his books is that Nibbana is here, now. It's open to inspection. Any intelligent person can attain Nibbana in the here and now. Sabbe satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta